Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, he deserves our praise. He deserves the glory. He deserves the honor. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on and lift those hands right where you at. And open up your mouth and give him glory. For he deserves it. He deserves it on today. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your holy name. Glory. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, my hallelujah belongs to you. Say, my hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, oh my hallelujah. It belongs to you. It belongs to you. Come on and lift up your voice and say, you deserve it. Jesus, say all of the glory. Yeah, it belongs to you. All the glory. We give you glory, Jesus. We give you the honor. Come on, 
Someone say it belongs to you, Lord. My hallelujah belongs to you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on and give him glory because he deserves it. He deserves it on today. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you. unto God. Believe it or not, prayer is a form of worship. It's how we get closer to God. So whatever your worries or your anxieties or cares are, give it unto God. Whatever is bothering you, whatever is concerning you, speak it unto God. You don't have to put it in the comments, but you speak it unto God. So God, we thank you for this opportunity to worship you. We thank you for this opportunity where you have relieved our fears, where you have caused our worries and our doubts to wash away. Many people are concerned with many different issues. We see the news, we see what's going on all around the world, but God, we know you are still able that you're still able to keep us from falling, that you're still able to help us in our moment of doubt and frustrations. You said that if we, if we resist the devil, if we resist the enemy, he will flee from us. Give us the power and the strength to go forward. Give us the push and give us hope, most importantly, to continue to go to another day. Because many people are doubting in their mind whether they can even make it another week, another day, another hour. But God, give them the power and the strength to know that they can make it. For you love the whole world that you gave your only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. There is life in Christ. There is joy and there is peace and unconditional love in Christ. Let everyone know right now who has been feeling like they're unworthy of your love, that, that they have been feeling that they have sinned too much or that they have been separated from you. Let them know that you still love them and that you still care for them. Because when we think about Apostle Paul, he wasn't always perfect. He didn't get everything right. But you still use him. He persecuted Christians. He, he murdered Christians. And that was his ultimate sin. But many have other sins. But God, let them know that they can still be used by you. Let them know that you can save the most loneliest, the most sick soul in the world. That nobody can be forgotten. Nobody, can, nobody cannot be loved by you. But allow them to know that you have loved the whole world. And thank you, God, for just being such a great father. To those who haven't had any fathers, those who haven't had mothers, or leaders in their lives. You have been everything to us. You have kept us this far. Even when we didn't have any friends or people around in our corner, you, you have kept us. You have kept us sane. And God, even though we're in this pandemic, I still pray that you begin to speak into the people, to the young people, the old people, every age group, that you 
Allow them to have a fire within themselves to do the things that please you. You said when your when your ways when their ways please the Lord, even the enemies shall be at peace with them. Even the favor of God will be at peace peace with you and you have the favor of God over you when you are in the will of God. Encourage us God today. Allow us to to fill your holy spirit. Allow us to do the work that you have called us to do in ministry. And even those in the hospital, we we pray for those in the hospital that's been in the hospital for weeks, even months. We pray that you heal them. We know that you are able to heal people. Whether it's from the heart, the physical, the mind, mental illnesses, you can heal anything that is wrong with them. And we we know the leopard man. He was paralyzed for years and losing hope. But still you healed him. Let them know that it doesn't matter how many years that they've been feeling sick, they've been feeling lonely. You can step in at any time in their lives and bless them. And God, please don't let us become desperate, but allow us to to use discernment in our relationships. Allow us to use discernment in businesses. Help us to to be smart in the things that we do and the decisions that we make and guide us in all of everything. Guide us in everything that we do. We need your guidance. We need to hear your voice. Give us the guidance that we're looking for. So we can go into the right directions. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. True success comes from when we are led by you. Allow us to become continue to be patient waiting on what you have promised us. Because we still know that your promises are true. but allow us to have patience and waiting for that promise allow this worship experience to bless people in Jesus name we pray amen anybody free on today
wanna lift your voice and say No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage, I am free free on today. Let me shake those hands and say free. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. Woo. Come on. One more time. Say. No more shackles, no more chains, no more bondage. I am free. Yeah. Oh, come on. Say hallelujah. Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are Alpha and Omega. We wait. 
on, if you know he's worthy, come on and lift up your voice and give him a praise right here, right now. Hallelujah, Jesus, you are worthy. Come on, come on, come on, lift up your voice. Give him glory. Come on and give up the glory. Give him the glory. He's been too good. He's been too kind. Come on, Lord, you are worthy of all our praises. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. For you are worthy of all our praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's worship him. Those that are watching, just Lift your hands right where you are. And let's just worship him. Let's, let's just get into the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord is here. And let's just tap into this move of God that is happening in this very moment. Let's savor this moment. Glory to your name, God. We worship you. We adore you, God. We lift you up. We magnify you for you are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Come on, let's tap into the presence of the Lord. If you're watching, just go ahead and, and begin to worship him. Just begin to glorify him. Just begin to love on him. Hallelujah. Right, right, right here while we're in the presence of the Lord. Let's just take this moment and just and just begin to just get into the, to the deeper places of God. Let's get into a, another dimension. Hallelujah, God. We glorify you. Hallelujah. We magnify you, God. This is an atmosphere for miracles. This is an atmosphere for miracles, signs, and wonders. Just go ahead and worship him. Don't even ask for anything right now, but just begin to worship him. And I, and I, and I guarantee you that as you get into worship, God is going to do something with you in this very moment. Hallelujah. God is going to move upon you right now in the name of Jesus. Glory to your name. We worship you, O oh God. We give you glory. We give you praise. We honor you, O oh God. We are, we are just so grateful to be in your presence once again, O oh God. Yes, Lord, touch my brother, touch my sister, touch that man, touch that woman, touch that young person, that teenager, touch that child right now in the name of Jesus. As they get into your presence, Lord, just begin to move upon. If you're watching, just share and like this right now to tag somebody, pull somebody in here. I just believe God is doing something supernatural right now in this moment. And as you begin to worship him, God is gonna do something that's gonna change your life. This is a moment of transformation. This is a moment of healing. This is a moment of breakthrough. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Oh God, we praise you. God, we lift you up. God, we magnify you, Lord. Hallelujah. We know that you're real, that your power is real. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, move, flow, Father, flow. Flow, Holy Spirit, flow. In the name of Jesus, flow, flow, flow. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Just give him a yes. Yes, Lord. We say yes to you, God. Thank you, Jesus. We're not here just to have church, but we're here to get into the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. We're not here by formality or routine or tradition, but we are serious about tapping into the presence of the Lord and experience and have an encounter with him. So I dare you that are watching, just begin to really worship him. Go ahead and just go ahead and really worship him. Hallelujah. Glory, God. We thank you for it. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your deliverance. Thank you for your breakthrough. Thank you for provision. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the testimonies that are going to come forth through this moment, through this time, through this exchange, Lord God. Thank you for every testimony. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you. We worship you. And we give you glory. 
and we bless your name. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, even as we begin to share the word of the Lord, we pray that you would speak clearly, Lord God, that you would take my mouth and use it for your glory, Lord God, that you would completely have your way in the name of Jesus, Lord God. As you, as you speak, Lord God, we will listen and we will hear what you have to say. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do through your word. And we thank you now in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Glory to God. Amen. We're so grateful. Welcome again to Faith Family Church, where we're more than a church, but we are a family. And we're so glad you were able to tune in with us on today. We expect a, a, a mighty move of God, and we are already on a high because of what God has already done through the worship experience and through the prayer. And we are just moving forward by sharing the word of the Lord um, on today. So I want you just to follow with me, amen, and hear what thus saith the Lord. And let's get full, let's get the full impact of this experience, of this virtual experience. Hallelujah. So we welcome you. We welcome you. Welcome. Do me a big favor. If you're watching, please like and share and even tag somebody. Let them know that FFC is on uh, so that you could be a part of this experience. For we want someone else to be blessed. Amen? We want someone else um, to be blessed. Amen? So quickly, uh, we thank God again for um, all of you and also um, FFC that is on. God bless you. Uh, we love you. And we honor you on today. We thank God for our first lady, Lady Sherelle. Amen? And my, and my children. Amen? The worship team and all those uh, that serve, even in the background um, here at, at Faith Family Church. We thank you. Amen. Amen. So quickly, uh, I'm going to read from Matthew, the fifth chapter. Amen. I'm going to read from Matthew, the fifth chapter. Um, but while we're getting that, do me a big favor and type in the comments, I'm blessed. Just do me a big favor and type in the comments, I'm blessed. Let's declare that before we even read. Let's just type in the comments, I'm blessed. Go ahead, put that in the comments. I'm blessed. Let's declare that. Let's make a declaration that I am blessed. Amen? Amen. So we're reading from Matthew, the fifth chapter. We're going to start at the first verse and read on down. Amen. We call this the Beatitudes. I know many of you have heard that before. So please just, uh, just hear me as I read the word of the Lord. And the Bible says, and seeing the multitudes, we went up, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are they... Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you for falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted the prophets which were before you. Let's give God praise for the word of the Lord and let's just make a declaration that I am blessed. I am blessed. I want to talk today about what does it really mean to be blessed. I want to talk about the definition of being blessed, right? What does it really mean to be blessed? Because truth be told, many have the wrong idea of what it means to be blessed. Some people that think they're blessed are really not blessed. And others that think they're not blessed really are blessed. <laughs> so we want to talk about what does it really mean to be blessed, right? We read the Beatitudes, and the Beatitude really teaches us that being blessed is not the position that you're in and is not something that you have attained, but being blessed 
is an attitude. Being blessed is a mindset. So those that can maintain a certain mindset can maintain the fact that they're blessed. If you remain consistent in a certain thought life, the thought life that God would have you to have, then nothing can change the fact that you are blessed. What does that mean? That means that even if people say you're not blessed, doesn't mean you're not blessed. And even if your circumstances say you're not blessed, does not mean that you're not blessed. And even if um, trouble that surrounds you may look like you're not blessed, that does not mean that you're not blessed. Your blessing and being blessed is really a mindset. Don't you know that you're really not tied and you're not bound to your circumstance because circumstances change. And even though your circumstance may not be what you want it to be, it does not have to change the fact that you are blessed. I, I, it's unfortunate that as a counselor, I've learned and I've taught so many people that hurt people hurt people. But bless people, bless people. It may be involuntary. It may not make sense to us. But when we are in a certain mindset, it affects how we behave. It affects how we operate. It affects what we do and what we say. And we adopt the mindset that God would have us to have. Then we'll walk knowing that we are blessed. Many times when someone is hurting, they don't view themselves as blessed. All they see is the pain. But being in pain does not disqualify you from being blessed. Because you're hurting doesn't mean that you're not blessed. The Bible says, but even if you should suffer for what is right, you are still blessed. Look that up in 1 Peter 3 and 14. Even if you should suffer for what is right, you are still blessed. So do not fear the threats. Do not be frightened. When you know that you're blessed, no man, no woman can change the fact that you are blessed. And that's why it's so important that what we say really gets down in our spirit and causes us to become what we say. We have to start declaring I'm blessed. We have to start saying I'm blessed. If you're saved, if you have accepted the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you are born again, if you know him and, and a partner of your sin, then you need to start declaring that you are blessed. Despite of your circumstance, despite of your situation, despite of what things are going on around you, you have to know that you know that you know that you are blessed. And, and your blessing uh, uh, can't be altered because somebody doesn't like you. Hallelujah. I feel like shouting right there. Your blessing doesn't have to change because somebody doesn't like you. Because guess what, people of God? And you can testify to this because sometimes people won't like you and, and you, they won't have a reason for it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes the way people feel about you may not be something that you did per se. So if your blessing is predicated on what people say or how people feel about you, then you would have lost your blessing a long time ago. But I want you to declare, despite of how people view me, I'm still blessed. The Bible says in Numbers 23 and 20 that the man, the, 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 the prophet said, Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Don't you know when you're really blessed, and when, you, when God has stamped you, that is nothing or no one that can reverse it. So you don't have to be worried. You don't have to be concerned, but just walk in the blessings of God. He said that he came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And if God came that you may have life and have it more abundantly and you are walking with him, you don't have to be nervous about someone trying to steal your blessing. But you have to know that you are blessed. Because the definition of blessed does not always mean tangible wealth. Even though God wants to bless you, he wants to send you prosperity. He wants you to, to have what you need and more. But even if you're going through a season 
Hallelujah. I don't know who I'm speaking to now, but somebody may be going through a season where you don't have the tangible thing that you would like to have, but that does not change the fact that you are blessed. You have to know that you're in a process, you're in a journey, and God is developing you, but you're still blessed. Don't you know some people are financially rich, but they're not blessed? Some people have tangible wealth, but they're still not blessed. Being blessed does not mean that you don't have no trouble, right? Because many that have problems are still blessed. Many that have, have trouble even now. Somebody is in the middle of a great struggle. Somebody now that is watching me is going through some trouble right now. And I want to let you know that just because you're in the midst of some trouble does not change the fact that you're blessed. If you are walking with the Lord. So I want to tell you the real definition of being blessed is really to be divinely and supremely favored. That you are favored by God. That means that he is doing things for you that you may not even deserve, but the favor of God is on your life. And if you could look back over your life and really think about it, you many of you can watch and tell me that you can say, I am blessed. Some people that went, came up with me is not even here anymore, but I'm still here. I'm blessed. Some, some have, have, have diverted a whole nother way, and, and, and I'm still serving the Lord. I am blessed. I do have the favor of God on my life, and I cannot deny it. Because bless will, bless, blessing is, is, is so funny. It's so great that God has a way of blessing you even if people don't approve it. People, some people don't approve you to be blessed. If they had to sign paperwork for you to get your blessing, they, they would refuse to sign. Some people are, are, are waiting uh, for your downfall, waiting for your demise. And, and, and the fact that you're blessed is upsetting somebody. But I want you to declare that I'm blessed. I'm, unapologi I'm, I'm not apologizing for it, but I am blessed. And I want you to embrace that fact. I just believe that I'm prophesying to somebody today that there is a specific blessing. There is a specific thing that God has for you. And God wants me to tell you that that thing has your name on it. That means nobody else can get it. Nobody else can have it. God said there is some blessing that has your name on it. That it was created from the foundation of the world, that God planned it for you years before you even thought of, that there's some things that God has for you that has your name on it. That means no one can steal it. No one can take it away from you. That means as long as you don't forfeit it, that is yours. And when you are favored, God will really make your enemies your footstool. He'll make things that, that seem to be throwing you off course. He'll use those very things to elevate you. To your next level. The things that, that, that has caused you some, some struggle is actually developing you and even strengthening the fact that you are blessed. When you are favored, you can, you can have things that you don't even think you're qualified for. Come on, somebody. Things that, that, that other people had to go through uh, uh, certain things and get certain kind of credentials, but God will hand it over to you because he already declared that you are blessed and this is for you and this has your name on it and you may not have what you think are the qualities or the qualifications, but you need to walk in your blessing. When you are favored, people that don't even like you will find themselves blessing you. They'll become agents of God without even knowing it. Somebody shout glory to God. I don't know who I'm talking to now, but I want you to declare that I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I am blessed. I've known it from my childhood. I've known it through my struggle. I've known it through hardship and, and I've known it through storms of life. I have come to the conclusion that I am blessed. Because don't you know when one rejects you, it made you look in another direction that blessed the next 10, 20 years of your life. God was even orchestrating your next move through things that you thought were not good for you. God was still working it out for your good. You need to know that you're blessed. 
And that is the key to it all. As people of God, if you don't know him, I want to, I want to, I want to encourage you to accept the Lord as your, as your Savior, and to, to repent and, and, to, and, to, and to come to him and to surrender your life to him. Because in order to really be blessed, you have to be connected to the blesser. In order to really walk in the blessings of God or, or really be blessed, you have to be connected to the blesser. There has to be a covenant relationship. There has to be a, a connection that you have decided, that, that God didn't force you, but you made a decision that I want to serve the true and living God. He, the Bible says that he, is, he, the, he, he, he owns everything. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If I want to be connected to anybody, I want to be connected to God. So you understand that when you become a covenant relationship with God, that you become a kingdom citizen, that you become a kingdom citizen, that you have rights, that you are blessed, that you are in the family of God. And when you're a part of the family, some things are due to you. When you're part of the royal family, then you are blessed. Somebody shout glory to God. I feel the presence of the Lord here because I don't know who's watching and I don't know uh, 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 who I'm speaking to, but I just have a sense that somebody that's listening here needed to hear this word because the blessing of the Lord is on your life and God is working miracles even now. You may not even see it, but he's working behind the scenes and he's turning things in your favor. He's shifting things in your life. He's been keeping you all of this time and preparing you for this moment, for this season where he is going to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. I have an unction that somebody is getting ready to understand that you are blessed. Don't you know Jesus began his sermon with the words that seem to contradict each other, but God's way of living usually contradicts the world's system. God's way will contradict the world system. That means that when you walk with God, that you're going to be misunderstood. That you're not going to be voted the most popular. That you're not going to be uh, invited to the clique and to the social club. If you, if you want to live for God, you must be ready to say and do things that seem strange to the world. You must be willing to give when others are taking. You must be willing to love when others are hating. You must be willing to help when others are abusing. You must be willing to do the opposite of what the world is doing because you're walking in the blessing of the Lord because you know who you are, that you're in covenant relationship with God and you are declaring that you are blessed. Somebody here needs to declare that I know that I'm blessed. I'm feeling some pains and I'm feeling some hurts and I'm going through some issues and Things are not panning out the way I have planned it, but you need to start declaring that I am blessed. You need to start putting your faith with your confidence and walking in the blessings of the Lord. By giving up your own rights in order to serve others because God told you to, you are walking in a blessed place. You are walking and being who God has has designed for you to be. I'm getting ready to go, but I just want to I just want to declare this word to you, and I want you to know if you're watching that you are blessed. And if you don't know Him as your Lord and Savior, today is your day to become into covenant relationship with God, to surrender your life to Him, to repent. Amen. And believe that he died on the cross for your sins and begin to walk in salvation and walk in the blessing that you were supposed to walk in all along. I want to get through this real quick. The Bible says, blessed are they that mourn, right? So some of your experiences with losses and grief and how you have been through some hurtful moments with those that you have loved are no longer here. But despite of the hurt and despite of the disappointment and in spite of the times that you have the cry, I want, to, I, want to, I want to encourage you and remind you that God is a comforter. Yeah, you may have suffered a loss and you may have lost someone you love, but God is a comforter and you are still blessed. The Bible says, blessed are the meek. And I want, you, I want you to understand that being meek does not mean being weak. Because we know that pride comes before destruction. And you can be meek without being weak. But, but the Bible wants us to boast in the Lord. 
Right. Boast in the Lord and tell of his goodness. Amen. That you're not bragging, but you're letting people know what God can do. You are blessed. The Bible says bless are the poor in spirit. The one that realizes that they need God. The one that realized that it's not all about him. The one that's going to be honest with themselves and say, if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, I know I wouldn't be where I am now. The Bible says, blessed of the Lord, he maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. Even though I may be poor in spirit, I may have a moment where I feel poor in spirit. But when I know him, I'm still blessed. He said, bless them that are hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. God looks for someone that is in pursuit of him. David said, as the deer panted after the water brook. Right. So my soul, he was somebody hungry and thirsty for him. He said, you are blessed when you hunger and thirst after righteousness. God is looking for some hungry people, some thirsty people for the living water. The thing that really satisfies. He said, bless all the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. Don't you know so many want mercy, but they don't want to give mercy. The Bible says that if you be merciful, then, God, then, then the Bible says that the goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. You don't want to be a person that don't want to give mercy, but you want mercy from God. When you understand that, then you know that you are blessed. He said, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. When you strive to keep a pure heart, God will reveal himself to you. Sometimes we see everything else but God. Sometimes we see everything else that is going on but God. And I want to encourage you today to try to look past everything else that's going on in the world, in your family, in your finances, in your business, in your ministry, and see God through it all. Do not stop seeing God through everything that you're suffering, everything you're going through. Never stop seeing God. God wants you to ignore everything else that's going on around you and to see him. Then you'll know that you're blessed. He said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. When we stop fighting the wrong things and start fighting the right things. Don't you know we should we we when we should be fighting the 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 the, the enemy we should be fighting Satan we should be fighting the uh, uh, darkness we end up fighting each other instead. The only thing we should be instigating is a praise. We shouldn't have to gossip. We shouldn't have to talk about what's going on with this person and that person. But God is saying, blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the children of God. And, and, I, and I want to get to this part because this is so important. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of God. There is a reward he said, I am a rewarder of them that diligently seek me. That even going through persecution, you are still blessed. There is a reward for you in heaven. Blessed are ye when, when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. If you haven't been talked about, that means you're not doing nothing. <laughs> He's saying you're blessed when they talk about you. You're blessed when they revile you. You're blessed when they persecute you. You're blessed when they say things that are not true. That, that just lets you know that you're blessed. You, you need to start saying, you know what, that means I'm important. That means I'm valuable. The fact that you're talking about me, the fact that you're taking time out to talk about little old me lets me know that God has called me for something great, that I am blessed and I won't forfeit it. That it, it just reminds me how blessed I am. And when I know how blessed I am, I won't let anything or anyone stop me from moving in the things of God. Somebody here is in the development phase even now. Somebody here is being growing and being maturing through all of the vicissitudes of life and the things that, that you find yourself dealing with. Amen. Things that you have seen coming from the left and coming from the right and things that, that you just popped up out of nowhere. You don't know 
know where it came from, but you needed to start declaring. I'm getting ready to preach, but I feel the Holy Ghost moving right now. I, you need to start declaring that I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed when they like me. I'm blessed when they don't like me. I'm just blessed because I'm connected to the blesser. And if I stay connected to the blesser, if I stay keeping my hands in the Lord's hands, I don't have to worry because everything is going to be all right. I don't know who's watching tonight, today, but God is trying to remind you today. God is trying to let you know. He is tapping you on the shoulder and trying to let you know that you are blessed. Don't let anyone let you tell you that you are not blessed. Don't let anyone try to trick you into believing that you are not blessed because there's trouble at your door, because there's problems in your life, because you're dealing with an issue over here and an issue over there. You need to let the enemy know that I'm still blessed. I'm still walking in the blessings of the Lord. I'm still in covenant relationship with God. I'm still who God says that I am. I'm still anointed. I'm still appointed. I'm still moving in the ways of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my life. You better let the enemy know that I'm blessed whether you like it or not. I'm blessed whether you're upset or not. I'm blessed whether I look like it or not. I'm blessed whether I feel like it or not. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout glory to God. Somebody just lift your hands and shout I'm blessed. Somebody lift those hands and shout I'm blessed. Oh God. Come on. Push past your feelings. Push past your feelings. Push past what you feel and begin to declare I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. I just want to pray. And I want to seal this word with prayer so that you will walk in the word that was spoken over your life. Don't you know, there are many that have been delivered, but they made a decision to go back to the same thing that they were delivered from. But I want you to be transformed and to be changed on today. And as I pray, I believe that God is going to seal this word and that you're going to walk out what God has for you. Would you just point your, your hands toward the screen if you're watching? I want to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, let's connect and let's agree. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, I pray for those that are watching right now, Lord God. I pray that you would just stamp them with your blessing, that you would let them know that they are blessed, and that they will walk in the truth of your word that they will walk out what you have declared to us in your word, and that they will commit themselves over to you in a way like never before. I thank you, God, for what you have already done. I thank you for your protection. I thank you for your covering, Lord God. I thank you for you, how you have shielded us through all dangers seen and unseen. And we pray, Lord God, that you would charge them in their spirits, those that have, have become weary and well-doing, that they would begin to declare that they're blessed and to walk out the blessing that you have for them and be all that you would have for them to be. And those that don't know you, I pray that they'll make that decision to surrender their lives over to you, that they'll even reach out to us and, and, and ask how to get through and walk through this journey of salvation. I thank you, Lord God. I give you praise. I give you glory, Lord God. I thank you for the word that you have given us, Lord God. And I believe what you have already spoken, that you are going to bless in a tremendous way that there will be great testimonies, that there will be great signs and wonders and miracles. We thank you. We give you praise as we touch and agree for what you have already done. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen, amen. We thank God for what he has just done. Amen, we, are, we feel brand new, we feel rejuvenated, we feel the move of God even now. I, I even believe even now we are we're just walking in a residue of what God just has just done. Hallelujah. What God has just done in this moment. 
and I don't want you to allow it to escape you. Glory to God. So do me a favor. Make sure you share and like this and tag someone so they can be a part of this experience. And just hold on. Don't leave us quite yet. We'll have some announcements coming before you now. So please just hold on and, and stick with us for a few more minutes and, and, just, and just follow and listen to what the announcements are. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you. And know that you are blessed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. I pray that everyone was blessed by the songs, by the prayer, by the mighty word from our pastor. I just feel so full of new knowledge. I feel full of encouragement. But right now, this is our moment of giving. I, I know there's, there's power in giving. I, I'm a witness of it. You know, we have to really think about the purpose of giving. You know, it's not for the pastor, but it's for the house of God. It's for thanks, th giving God thanks, giving God glory for, for blessing you. And if you're waiting for your blessing, the, the Bible says, bring your tithes in the storehouse so that will be meat in his house. When you make sure it's meat in God's house, he makes sure it's meat in your house. So we have to keep that in mind. So at the bottom of the screen, you, you um, see the giving options, Cash App, Givelify, our church website. We're not going to tell you how much to give, but whatever God has laid on your heart, I pray that you have a blessed Sunday. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our announcement piece. Please, we want you to, to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Faith Family Church UHC. And on Sundays, every Sunday, we have our virtual worship experience at 3 p.m. where we're singing songs, praying, and have a mighty word of God. And on Mondays, we have our pastor, Robert Ferrer, who has his mental health moment on Facebook. You can find him at Robert Ferrer. He is a certified Christian counselor and life coach. On Tuesdays, we have our First Lady Ferrer and our pastor. They have a marriage mi ministry where they empower, equip, and encourage. This will be Tuesdays at 9 p.m. Wednesday, we have our Zoom, Zoom Bible study. We will give you the information um, if you reach our pastor or you reach our church page. But also on Friday, we have our prayer call where we bombard heaven and we can pray on your behalf. This will be prayer call Friday at 6 p.m. On Friday, we also have our parent coaching. Our first lady is a parent coach. You can find her at Sherelle Ferrer on Facebook. These um, chats will be every Friday at 1 p.m. So God bless you.